guys, it's Cupcake Kemi Summer back here with another different video. As you can probably tell, we're in a different room and my face is actually bare because what today's video is, is uh, how I do my signature makeup. Now, a key difference between how I'll get ready in this video versus how I get ready actually is all this. Normally makeup is more of the first thing that I do and I'll do it whilst in my underwear and by underwear I do mean all the Lolita proper underwear so I'll have bloomers on, I'll probably have socks on if there's a tank top to go underneath something I'll have that but there'll be no blouse, no dress, no petticoat, hair won't be done but that's not necessarily YouTube friendly so I've put on the cord, I've done my hair the mirror that I do my makeup is actually here and partly because of where it's positioned and partly because it's something I've gotten used to I have this little strip of light so this is what you'll see on the video because otherwise it is too dark for me to see what I'm doing so I will run you through my process I will show you some of the things that I use and tell you how to substitute them basically because it's makeup it's not it's not a recipe it's one way to do it especially since my signature makeup is very much of the vintage rockability retro appropriate variety so if any of you follow youtubers that show makeup like that or if that's a style that you're into outside of Lolita, you'll already know how I do these things. So without much further ado, because I do have a tendency to ramble and I'm sure I'll ramble through this video, let's get to it. Hopefully I'm in the frame, in roughly the right place. What might surprise most people is that I actually start with the eyes and then move on to the face. The reason for this being if I mess something up then I'm just wiping off the eye part and not the base that I've spent god knows how long doing. So I start off with eyeshadow primer. This one's from NYX. NYX. It costs can't remember how much but it's cheap it's of the cheaper variety and it does a brilliant job so I'll I'll do two swipes like this I am in the process of running out of this but I do have a backup you'll see me do a lot of this because I hate using my hands for anything that gets them dirty so I keep a Towel. and then as I sort of wait for the primer to not to say dry but just set I get on with my eyebrows hopefully that was right in the camera at the moment I have a auto eyebrow pencil from Innisfree in a colour I can't read because it's in Hangul but it's one of them auto pencil at one end and then a little spoolie at the other and eyebrows are not my forte so my aim is to roughly pluck them into the shape i want sadly the shape i want is not possible because my eyebrows are naturally straight and i want an arch so i make do with what i can do Then I'll go back to the spoolie to sort of blend it out a little bit. Once I'm done with my eyebrows, I'll take a step back and look at it as a whole because I find that when I do makeup and I focus on just one part, it can end up looking odd. <laughs> you need to make sure that your makeup looks good in the context of your whole face. Once I'm done with eyebrows, then I move on to my eyeshadow and I come armed with... Um, what I'll need and the first thing that I do is work on my crease it's not so much a cut crease kind of eyeshadow but I do the crease first because that's the darkest thing and then I do the lid after my go-to palette for life <laughs> it's fame from Colourpop it's a cool based neutrals 
palette so it's not particularly exciting but for what i need and for what i'm trying to achieve it's i just haven't found one to beat it yet but before that um you're probably wondering why i'm holding the hair down up it's to wipe my brushes clean in between shadows i can't remember where i picked this up from other than a random makeup video on youtube i must have been looking for a how-to on how to do a specific look and the person there was doing that and i thought that's quite clever rather than trying to brush off the excess obviously you're not going to get rid of all the product from your brush by just you know wiping it against the donut but it gets enough so that my blending doesn't get muddied i start my crease by applying the lightest shadow first which in this case is razzle and what i'll do is i'll i try and look straight ahead in the mirror you don't want to be pulling anything because then your eyeshadow won't sit where you want it to you want to look ahead find out where my eyelids and my eyes sit naturally and apply the eyeshadow there and i start off with the lightest shape that goes on very crudely <laughs> Because this is colour pop, you don't need a lot to get a good colour payoff. And I'll start off at the highest point, roughly in the centre. It doesn't necessarily matter whether there's a lot of colour visible for this one, because I'm using it as a transition shade. And I just want a large-ish area covered that i will blend the other shades into and i try as best i can to avoid getting any shadow on the mobile eyelid one thing i did learn from another random youtube video is what you blend extends which means you shouldn't be trying to get the shadow or get the color everywhere that you want it to end up because as you blend it it will extend and move into the other places so Then I'll move on to the mid colour, which is Stardom on this palette. And that's when I'm starting to get into defining the crease. And I aim to do the same as I've done with the lighter shadow, but keep it less spread. So the lighter shadow I could apply fairly widely and I was going quite high up. This one I'm trying to keep maybe three quarters halfway of that width now i'm without my glasses and i don't have contacts in and i'm nearsighted so i need to lean in slightly to check whether i've done it the way i want it it seems to look fine. Now this isn't going to be your bold, stark makeup. It is more on the natural side. But the reason I like this particular look is A, it's pretty universally flattering. I mean, obviously I do it on myself because it's flattering on my face. But I find that because you're following your natural features rather than drawing something new entirely you're accentuating what you have and what you have is already beautiful and b because it is neutral it works with pretty much any style so today i'm leaning more classic which this look is perfect for but i could just as easily wear it with a sweet coordinate because it's a neutral natural ish makeup that just accentuate things for gothic i would it, it would work but it would be very casual gothic since to me gothic also involves heavier makeup 
And then I'll move on to the darkest brown in this palette, which is called Clubhouse. And again, I'll repeat the process. And once more, trying to get it even more contained and closer to being on the actual crease as possible. And again, it's important to look at yourself from a bit of a distance and look at both eyes at the same time. Now, I'm happy with how this looks. Sometimes when I do this makeup, even with these colours, I find that I want the crease to be even more defined, which means I'll need a, an even darker brown. Because even though between these three colours, I have a nice natural looking gradient, this darkest brown isn't quite dark enough and the black here is very black. But the good thing with that formula of makeup is it's not restricted to neutral, so you can go with any colour as long as you have at least two to three shades of it and follow the same technique of get the lightest one first, fairly broadly, then get the slightly darker one second going in on your crease and then if you want to you don't have to but if you want to you can get a third even darker shade so i need to swap some brushes because i'll now be moving on to adding color to my eyelid and for that i tend to stick with mattes now depending on how i felt on a given day in this palette the three that i'd use Center Stage, Delirium, or Celeb. It doesn't really matter which one I go for because there's not that much difference between them once they're applied. Normally I'd go for Celeb if I was including any pinks in my look, even though on the eyelid it just looks light. I'm not sure if I'll add any pinks to this yet, so I'll stick with Center Stage because it's ever so slightly lighter. I get a bit on my brush, tap off the excess and I will tap and press it in to the eyelid whereas before I was doing more of a swirly, swishy motion and the reason I do that is because that gives me the best colour payoff because I want this to be very visibly lighter than the crease I've just created I'm happy with this shape, I'm happy with the colour. If I were to glam it up, so to speak, I probably would put on a sparkly shade on top of that. I don't have glitter as such, but most of the sparkly shades in this palette are quite sheer, so they work as eyeshadow toppers. But I'm going for a daytime look, I don't need it to be particularly sparkly. So I'll leave it there and then all I need is to pick a sparkly shadow to go into my inner corner and oddly enough all these sparkly shades look slightly different in the palette but kind of end up being very similar once on. Debutante is what I use most often, probably followed by extravaganza. Now from what I remember debutante is also great as a highlight. So I'll use it as a highlight and I'll use extravaganza for my inner corner. I will use my little finger to do it because I feel like it gives me a better payoff. So I'll get a little bit, little bit at the tip of my little finger and literally just press it. Oh shit, I've got a debutante. <laughs> oh well, it just goes to show that this is the one I reach for the most. Now, if I needed this makeup to stay, and I mean stay, not move, for the whole day, for an event, for example, I would spritz some 
makeup setting spray now to set the eyeshadows. I don't think today's day when I'll need that, so I'll just move on and I'll do my eyeliner. My eyeliner is also from NYX. It's called Epic Ink Liner and it's supposed to be a dupe for Kat Von D's tattoo liner. In terms of the eyeliner itself, it works just as fine. I have a problem with this in that this particular felt tip liner leaks. What I'll get, I'll start using it or straight away I'll have like a bubble of liner, which is why I have a bit of tissue paper so that I can wipe that off the liner before it goes either on my clothes big reason why i normally do that when i'm just in on these <laughs> or before it ruins the rest of my makeup fingers crossed today's not going to be the messy day no it is it is oh that's a big one i try and keep my liner mid thickness so i'm not going for gigantic amy winehouse esque liner i'm also not necessarily aiming for that slim line that sits just above eyelashes because that's hella difficult so i aim for a mid-length one and what i do with my liner as you'll see is i basically draw the outline and fill it in because it's easier to keep them even that way but also eyeliner is a fickle creature so there are good eyeliner days and bad eyeliner days <laughs> and i don't know which one will it be today so oh yeah and i do my eyeliner on open eyes because again then i see where it will be once i'm looking up quite happy with that so i'll fill it in As you may have noticed, I only fill it in to about there, roughly where my eyelid ends. And I'll do a flick from there. What I'll often do is I'll draw a tiny dot, roughly where I want the tip of my point to be. And I try and connect it by following my lower eyelid up and then joining that tip at the top in as straight a line as possible to the line I've drawn. And I will normally aim for that little dot for my tip to be where the light shadow meets the crease. And I often do that even if I want my liner to be bolder because it's easier to add than to take away. And then if I do mess something up, then I still have room somewhere to go. tiny dots I'm pleased with that let's fill that in so it turns out today was a good eyeliner day I'm very very pleased just to show you so this is what it looks like when I'm looking straight ahead and then when i close my eyes this is what i mean when i say you need to look straight ahead to see where your finished product will be depending on my mood i will line my waterline now if i wanted something stark then i'd use a bright white liner and nyx's jumbo pencil is perfect for that recently i started using a champagne liner with a bit of sparkle Right now it's this one from Idol, which is a Korean brand. I honestly wasn't paying attention to brands, I was just looking for one that had the right colour. If you want whatever colour you're putting on your waterline to be sharper and brighter, you can get a Q-tip. Gently run it along your waterline to basically dry it and then put your liner immediately after. That is the extent of my eye makeup. I would put on mascara and stuff, but that goes on later. And the reason why it goes later is I normally put it on after I've put on my clothes so that I don't mess anything up. 
which I know technically isn't a thing now, but I'm trying to stick as much to what I normally do as possible. And now we get onto the base. Now, this is something I agree with Lou Graves on, in that when we say base, we just mean your face. So get it to the state that you want it to look. What I do may be way too excessive for one person, it may be not enough for another. Obviously, products will react differently with different skin types and different people. So even though I'll show you what I do, this isn't a recipe, it's one way of doing it. I need my towel with me again, I'll put it gently here. So I'll start off with primer, which again is from NYX. Am I very fussed about primer? Not particularly, this one's cheap and doesn't break me out. I have combination skin, which means that my cheeks tend to be normal drying or prone to drying in winter and my t-zone is oily and this primer goes on matte which is exactly what i want if you want a more dewy finish that's valid i don't know what will give you that next is my liquid foundation I use the Magic Foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. I will literally do just one pump, which is about this much. And I'll dab it on with my finger. Doing more when I think I need more coverage. This is a medium coverage foundation, so it's not going to give me, you know, a white canvas. But also remember that you know, most of the times I'm doing makeup to go out in, not for photo shoots. Now this one pump is probably just a little bit more than I actually need, but what I do like to do is double up on it around my cheeks and hide my natural cheek colour and also almost use it as a concealer in places where I think I need a bit more coverage. If there is anything that I find is still showing up that I don't like, obviously I will. This is about as much coverage as I require, but seeing as I have a tiny bit left on my hand, what I'll do is I'll get my beauty blender, scoop that up, basically clean my hand, and normally add it to my forehead. To set it, again depends on how I'm feeling, and I'll either go with a translucent powder, the one I have and that I use is from um, Etude House, but if I feel like this is it, then I'll use a translucent powder, or if I'm using cream blushes, then I'll use a translucent powder to not cover that up. On days when I feel like I want to be more matte, uh, or where I feel like I want more coverage, I have a pressed powder foundation from Illa Masca, just called powder foundation. If I am feeling very lazy or very good about my skin or if I don't necessarily need coverage but just want a little bit of it to even out my skin tone, I'll use this. This is fantastic. It's one of the very, very few products I'm hitting a pan on. And even then, a little goes a long way, so I'll literally just go tap. That's it, that's all I need. Now, thanks to using this on top of my foundation, I do have a pretty blank canvas now to do my blush on. My ultimate blush and it's the ultimate because it's the most natural shade for me. It's from Colourpop. It's one of the Super Shock Cheeks. In the shade Prenup. The idea behind them is that they're cream to powder. So they are better applied with fingers anyway. I just, I'm terrible at blending blush with fingers. So I still use a brush. The way I do my blush changes. Recently, I've been very much into contouring with blush so to speak so doing doing it in a straight-ish line here 
with a tiny bit of blend out there because that's on the apples of my cheeks because that's where my cheeks naturally blush a lot and now I apply it in dabs no idea whether that's better whether any other makeup artists agree that this is better than doing it in swipes or swells I just like it because it gives me more control now the thing with blush is for it to show up on camera, you normally need way more than you think you do. But again, I'm doing this makeup for a daytime look. I will be filming a little bit in this, but I don't need tons. As I said, it's a bit of contour by blush, which is something, again, picked up from a random makeup video on the internet. Because I suck at contouring. So, I think it's easier, maybe a little bit more natural looking, to just sculpt your face with blush and a bit of highlight, then try and get that shadow there, visible but blended. That's where I struggle with contouring. How do we keep it so that it's visible, it does what it's supposed to, but it's blended? No idea. If you know, tell me please in the comments, link me to videos. I've tried, I failed. This is why I don't do it anymore. Now this particular blush goes on ever so slightly shimmery. So if I wanted to, I could skip highlight, but I fancy highlight, so I'm going to do it. I do have some highlights, again, mostly from Colourpop. But as I mentioned earlier, I would often use one of these shades as a highlight. So I mentioned Debutante. I'll get a little bit on the tip of my finger because I'm not going for a blinding highlight. I'm going for a natural one. core of it stays in that little crescent moon if at any point I feel like I've added a bit too much then I'll blend it with a clean finger that will take some of the excess off now this is the point where I'll probably also do a bit of highlight under my brow Sometimes if I'm feeling like it, I'll add a dot of it to the tip of my nose, because why not? And I will sometimes do my cupid's bow. It's gone hella dark outside. Happy with that. This is the point in my makeup where I'd put on another layer of setting spray if I needed it. Also, this is the point where I get dressed. I am already there, I'm dressed, I have my hair done. And the reason for that is again, I don't want to stain my clothes with either mascara or my lipstick. If I wanted that bold retro look, I would have gone for red lipstick. If I wanted something soft and more romantic, I'd go with pink. And if I needed like a daytime neutral, I don't even want to call it nude because it's not, it's slightly darker version of what my lips colour naturally is because that's the beauty of doing this makeup with neutral eyeshadows is your lipstick pretty much makes the makeup you could make the makeup with blush by going for you know a bolder colour or a different colour you could make it with colourful eyeshadows in which case you probably want a more neutral lip but when it's with neutrals on your eyes you can add whatever colour you fancy on your lip and it'll still look good. My problem is I have way too many lipsticks and I just get overwhelmed with choice. So let me go look at my lipsticks before I pick one. So I decided that I wasn't feeling a nude lip, that I wanted something pink. And I almost went for my go-to pink from Charlotte Tilbury. Before I remember that I have another pink lipstick that isn't Bright Fuchsia, because the ones I have are either very bright and bold or that soft, rosy um, one from Charlotte Tilbury. I remember that I have this, which is from New Look. The shade is called Mid Pink, and it is just that. It's, as you see, you know, it's mid pink, slightly corally. I can't remember the last time I've worn that, so I thought, let's use that. Before I do that, I'm going to line my lips with whatever's left of this liner. It's from Max Factor. 
I can tell you that the shade was called Pink Petal, but I can't remember what the line itself is called. I'm just trying to use it up because Max Factor is not cruelty free. I don't want to just chuck it out. As you can tell, it served me well. And then I know that technically you should be applying lipsticks with a lip liner. I can never be bothered. So I just go straight in and I'll have, you know, the same bit of tissue paper for blotting after and for correcting any mistakes. Oh yes, you are nice. Why did I stop using you? I almost said and that's it, but then I remember I still haven't put mascara on. Now here is some most embarrassing behaviour. While I do makeup, I keep my eyelash curler in, the, in my brow. <laughs> and the reason for that is when the eyelash curler is warm, it curls your lashes a little bit better. <laughs> so I can just keep it there, you know, while I do everything else. And similarly to the eyelash curler, I also keep my mascara down my brow because mine is kind of old and starts to dry out a little but there's still loads in there so if I warm it up it goes on a little bit better and a little bit less clumpy. I have a mini version of the Better Than Sex from Too Faced. I'm gonna give the top lashes a few moments to dry a bit so that I don't get a black imprint before doing my bottom ones. How hard you try, you always pull the face. I'm happy with this. And now we're done. Glasses back on so that I feel like myself again. my package. Package. That is mine. Package. I wasn't sure if I was going to do an unboxing video for these but now I think I will. <laughs> Seeing as I conveniently got ready. So let me wrap this video up, put everything else on, I think I'll need some jewellery and then I'll be done. But yeah, this is my go-to makeup. I've done it time and time again which means that I can now slap it on fairly quickly and especially if I'm having a good eyeliner day, if I'm having a good face day, feeling confident, I know that I can make adjustments to it to be quicker if I need to. And also if I do feel like I want to be a bit more experimental, I can do that with colour and use the same techniques. I can also sometimes do a bit of shadow under my eye or like in like the outer fourth it's easy to adapt and on that note i will wrap this video up so i can film the unboxing for the stuff i just got i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope that it has come useful for anyone who might have wondered how i do my makeup and if not that you've at least found it entertaining if you have give this video a thumbs up comment on it subscribe to the channel I aim to do one video a month. You are guaranteed one video a month for as long as I'm doing the around your wardrobe in 30 coordinates challenge. But as you can imagine, seeing as I'm filming this and there'll be an unboxing, I'm trying to do more filming whilst stuck in lockdown. If you want to encourage me to do more filming, then you can do so by buying me a cup of coffee. A link to my coffee page is in the description box below. I have stuck to my promise on being better about updating the coffee page so there will be either sneak previews of things or teasers of what the next blog post will be or any video that I'm working on so you do want to stick to that and as always I do encourage all of you to check out my blog which is cupcakes and unicorns where you'll find more Lolita content thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one quite soon bye